Hi, I'm Wade Harvey, and thanks for watching uh, part 7 of uh, putting the pieces of .NET together. This section will focus on uh, software development tools, Visual Studio, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, and so forth. Uh, so, uh, okay, what uh, tools do you need? Well, there's uh, three basic ones. You need SQL Server. You need SQL Server Management Studio, and you need Visual Web Developer at a, ba a very minimum. Uh, and where can I get the Express free versions? Well, you can go to www.microsoft.com at uh, slash Express. And where do the tools reside? Well, they all reside in the program files. Uh, Visual Studio resides under Microsoft Visual Studio in the program files. Uh, the uh, several utilities are inside this. Uh, Microsoft SDKs uh, slash Windows, uh, for example, the GAC utility, which is used to update uh, the assemblies in the GAC. Uh, then uh, the uh, for SQL Server, uh, the programs for the uh, SQL Server is that in the bin directory of, uh, of the program files, and the uh, databases themselves uh, reside in the data folder. In that directory. Here. Okay, uh, now we get to an exciting part, I think, is uh, ha what happens when I compile a page. Well, it starts out uh, where you're uh, typically, this is how it goes, uh, your uh, source code is up in your program files, Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, slash projects, if it's a project you're working on, or a uh, website. It's in the websites folder. That's typically where uh, we start putting our source code. Then you can right click on the project uh, property pages and select build options in Visual Studio to specify uh, uh, the, where you want the pre-compiled files and uh, the solution files uh, SLN and SUO uh, to go. And uh, uh, the um, SLN is just a, a list of all the projects inside the solution. And the SUO is uh, the user options that were specified, how do they want it to look when it comes up in Visual Studio. So then there's a pre-compiled version consists of your ASPX pages and the DLLs for the code behind. The DLLs are the uh, Microsoft Intermediate Language that uh, will get converted to uh, native ones and language, ones and zeros, at runtime. And compiling involves bringing the pieces uh, needed from the net framework and from the uh, global assembly cache together. And the compiled version goes into uh, the Windows Microsoft.NET framework in this temporary ASP.NET uh, files folder. We've talked about that before. And we used uh, uh, the ILDASM to uh, take a look at uh, what the intermediate language looks like in an earlier set, uh, part of the series. Okay, what happens when a page executes? Now I got this from a Microsoft uh, page and I listed the page there to give them credit. Uh, and what happens is the client uh, is on their computer and they enter a URL in the browser. That URL is translated into an IP address and goes across the internet and comes to the uh, internet uh, information uh, services uh, web server. and uh, from there, uh, if it's a ASP uh, X page, it uh, the application it uh, uh, is turned over to the ASP uh, Net Runtime Engine, and the application manager creates an application domain the first for the first uh, request for that application, and that sets up a hosting environment, which is a protected sandbox for the application to run in. And then uh, uh, here's uh, just a restatement of uh, how it happens. Uh, the 
the client uh, creates an HTTP re request and that URL is uh, the domain name servers translate that into an IP address which is like a telephone number that's associated with each computer that's on the internet and so that gets uh, the, uh, the, uh, the request down to the server and uh, if the domain name server hasn't populated on the internet net, if you've you got a new domain name, a new URL, you can associate it temporarily by going to this file here uh, in uh, Windows System 32 drivers etc. host and you just uh, type in the IP address uh, uh, in the uh, uh, URL that you want to associate with that and then you need to remember to delete that after it's uh, been populated on the internet. It usually takes 4 to 24 hours for it to populate across the internet uh, when you create a new uh, URL uh, domain name when you buy a domain name from like GoDaddy whatever. Uh, then from there it goes uh, to IIS or uh, ASP.NET Development Server. Even when you're running on ASP.NET Development Server, it uh, is using an IP address. It's 127.0.0.1 uh, slash uh, port uh, number. Uh, that's where that is listening. So the general steps are the ISAPI uh, uh, takes uh, the request and decides whether it's an ASP.NET. If it is ASP.NET, it uh, creates an app domain the first time and starts uh, H the HTTP runtime takes over. Okay, here's another picture. Uh, this shows that you can have several clients uh, uh, submitting their request and they all go into this one large application domain, but each request uh, creates an HTTP context. And the HTTP context consists of their request and the response. And this is an a a HTTP application object. So these all are, are run in the runtime in the application domain. So they can run simultaneously. You can have three people asking for different things in the application. And runtime will uh, carry them all out for you. Okay, uh, IIS or, or development server, uh, or the ISAPI uh, looks at the extension and uh, turns uh, ASPX uh, extension over to ASPNet. If it's a .NET page, ASPNet will, uh, runtime will take care of it. And ASPNet creates the application domain the first time and then starts the application request and the HTTP runtime can handle multiple contexts. Inside of each one there's a request and a response. And the response, uh, request and the response are for uh, both the page and the cookies involved in the uh, request and the response. Okay, and then the HTTP runtime does the following. It validates the request. Uh, uh, if you have validate request uh, equals true, which is the default at the top of every ASPX page, uh, it, this uh, checks for malicious markup of uh, 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 JavaScript injection, cross-site scripting injection. And if you've specified that you wanted any URLs remapped in your web config, that'll happen in, by the HTTP runtime. And it uses uh, the NET framework to convert the uh, Microsoft Intermediate Language in the temporary ASP.NET files, and it also uses what's in the GAC uh, to convert those into the native code for that machine, which is the ones and zeros. Another thing the HTTP runtime does is it checks for authentication and authorization. Is it, who is this person that's asking for it, and do they have uh, correct rights to access this resource? And finally, uh, it invokes uh, anything that implements the I HTTP handler to process requests. And for the ASPX, uh, this is the uh, page handlers.